The year is almost over and I just found out that Bad Bunny was the most streamed artist on Spotify this year. And this made me want to talk about reggaeton. Not only because I love it, but because its history is really cool. And the fact that Bad Bunny is one of the biggest artists right now, it's an example of that. And while I was doing some research, I kept seeing articles saying that Puerto Rico is the birthplace of reggaeton. And listen, I'm not saying that Puerto Rico didn't have a huge impact on the genre. I mean, it's the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, the anthem of Puerto Rico. But saying that reggaeton was born in the country is disputed. And in this video, I want to show how the history of reggaeton is one of culture exchange, of talented musicians across the Americas and other continents as well, inspiring each other and creating different genres until the final result is... Um, Pereo. And the whole story starts with two pieces of wood. Así que mucho reggaeton por ahí, mucho perreo y bueno, el perreo intenso acaba de comenzar. If we want to talk about the early history of reggaeton, we have to talk about the tresillo, which is basically two sets of three beats. Some historians say that it's an evolution from the song clave, and clave is also the name of this instrument. And we know that these musical patterns were brought to the Americans by African slaves. The earliest documentation we have is from Cuba, but unfortunately, we can't really pinpoint where from Africa it's from. And it's kind of a controversial issue because there's similar rhythms in many sub-Saharan African countries. I'll put some links in the description if you want to know more about that. Okay, but why is the tercio so important? Well, many historians believe that the tercio and the clave are kind of the roots from which all Latin American music kind of branched out, you know? For example, many scholars believe that the mixture of the tresillo with what was known as the contradance from France is what gave birth to a rhythm called contradanza. Or as it was known in Europe at the time, la habanera. And you know what's also called la habanera and it was inspired by contradanza? Yes, the opera. And you know what else was inspired by Contradanza? Yes, tango. Okay, 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 okay. But you know what I was inspired? Yes, many, many, many jazz rhythms. What I'm trying to get at is that the simple pattern inspired so many rhythms from Latin America and beyond. And obviously, as a Caribbean country, the tercio was also found in Jamaica, where it evolved to become reggae and dancehall. So now we should talk about Panama. With the construction of the Panama Canal, the country had a considerable Jamaican diaspora. And just picture this scene. In the 80s, if you were an aspiring musician, your best chance of getting noticed was by selling your albums to bus drivers, known as the Diablo Rojo, which would play it to people on board. And this left a lot of room for experimentation. Some artists would pick rhythms from Jamaica and remix them in Spanish. And some of the most popular music that they played was called Plenas, or Spanish Reggae, which could be considered some of the first reggaeton songs even though the name didn't exist yet. And one of the most famous examples is El General, with hits like Rique Apertadita or Tu Pum Pum, which are still played in weddings and quinceañeras to this day. Yo cuando empecé a lo, hace 16 años, nadie creía en esto. Decían, no, eso es una ola pasajera. Y mira ahora, y mira mira ahora cómo está eso, ¿no? El reggaeton es, es el movimiento más fuerte juvenil latino. Sí. Latino, claro que sí. Now I want to fast forward a little bit to the 1990s because that's when Chai Barranks, a Jamaican artist, released Dembo. For me, Dembo is a song that gave the name to a genre of music that already existed at the time and it was pretty much a variation of dancehall. 
In a very simplified way, dumbbell is a tresillo mixed with a 4x4 drum that comes from reggae. And it already sounds like modern reggaeton, doesn't it? And this rhythm became really popular in Latin America. So popular, in fact, that some studies say that 80% of reggaeton music was sampled from this song. And some say that reggaeton was born from the remixes in Spanish of the song Dembow. If that's true, and if we really want to be nitpicky, some of the first remixes were done by Latinos in New York, if not in Panama, not Puerto Rico. And now we should talk about Puerto Rico, because if reggaeton was not born there, it's definitely where it gained momentum. There's where musicians start experimenting with the dumbbell rhythm and with hip-hop. A collective of DJs called The Noise is particularly important to our story here. They were situated in discriminated communities in Puerto Rico, and the sound they made at the time was criticized for being black and underground sounds. And even though it's not a topic here, I think a video about the political history of reggaeton could be a really cool video. What do you think? For now, what's important to know is that by the mid-90s, reggaeton was a big part of popular culture in Puerto Rico, and by the 2000s, well, Daddy Yankee happened. Choperreo. And the rest is history. After that, artists from all over Latin America popped up, like J Balvin from Colombia, or Nati Natasha from the Dominican Republic, or even, to a certain extent, Anita from Brazil. And more and more, international artists wanted to do reggaeton sounds. And that's how a 5 beat pattern continued to evolve from Africa to the Caribbean, to Central America, to North America, and to the world. And for me, reggaeton is, and always was, transnational, transcultural, and transcendent. And all of that while we were perreando. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like, and even more if you could subscribe. Otherwise, I will see you next year. Bye, and enjoy the holidays.